Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Erkka Jouste and I'm from the Finnish Esports Federation, as you are and Max already told. Uh, I'm currently working also full time in the Federation, which is quite quite rare all over the world as well. Anyways, let's go go ahead and start with the presentation. Uh, well, here's some agenda what I'm going to be talk about. I guess most of you know what what is what esports is, so I'm not going to spend that much time talking about that. But then there's the main main issue or the uh, thing I'm going to talk here is the esports in Finland and what's the state of the esports in Finland. And then I'm going to uh, have a few words about what the federation does and who we are. And because unfortunately I can't stay uh, after this uh, presentation, I'm, you can ask me questions, uh, of course, along the presentation, but after the presentation as well. <coughs> so, what is esports? Well, it comes to the competitive gaming usually, and well, gaming in general, but esports is more defined usually about its competitiveness and uh, the amount of skill you need to practice esports. It's not just gaming. Uh, you can, you know, you can uh, have competitions in Minecraft and such, but it's not usually uh, considered esports in a sense. So. Uh, What's typical for esports versus sports itself? Uh, esports is going towards the sports community all the time, and we are working on that uh, with the, especially here in Finland, with the International Esports Federation. And in Finland, we are also talking about National Olympic Committee, and we have a uh, relationship ship towards them as well. Anyways, uh, uh, how how esports is defined against or versus sports is more demographic on esports is younger in general. Uh, sports fans, uh, sports players, athletes are usually in general like uh, 30 to 40 year olds. Uh, of course, starting at, at 20s and uh, in teens, but in esports is usually teens and just uh, 20 to 30 year olds. So the de younger demographic is really dominating in esports. Uh, well, more male dominated. Still, uh, the uh, the field is coming coming more equal, divided between female and male uh, gamers. Uh, of course, gaming is as popular in in both both groups, but still the competitive gaming is still dominated by by males, uh, and I think it's. It's, it's because of the history of gaming, and, and uh, gaming has been more acceptable for males. Of course, well, the uh, people are naturally dig digital, and that's, that's more of a, the younger generations. They have been growing with uh, phones, uh, mobile phones. They have been growing up with uh, computers all their lives. Uh, TV hasn't dominated their, their uh, childhood that much. Uh, on, on and, and uh, then there's born global, and they, when they are in connected all the time with their uh, mobile phones, internet, all the time. So they understand what's going on in the digital world. But that's about esports and sports. Sports is trying to integrate in, uh, esports into sports all the time. They see the potential. Of course, the market is big, uh, the audience is huge, and there's a lot of money going around. And this is more of a uh, topic about, I, I mentioned Minecraft being, uh, or competitions in Minecraft being held, but this is more about what's actually eSports. So uh, eSports titles are completely viable. So basically they are in uh, already, when they come out, you can play them competitively. There's probably a competition uh, system maybe integrated into the game itself already when it, it comes out. Um, of course, what esports needs is the large and dedicated player base. You can't have a competitive gaming without a lot of players, a lot of competition, but also audience has a huge meaning today for esports. Uh, back in like early 2000s, mid 2000s, it was usually esports, uh, or when, when the esports was starting to get defined, you didn't have these audiences because you didn't have 
uh, third-party streaming software like Twitch and uh, Owned TV and whatever it used to be back then. It was always more player-focused and more competition-focused. But nowadays, it just uh, com comes to that uh, also the last point, developer backing. So the developer of the game has to put time and money into the title and into the community to make it an esports title. And well, there's some other other points as well, like player versus player, team versus play team. Usually, esports cannot be player versus environment or or uh, computer uh, in in general. Anyways, let's go to the main topic here: uh, esports in Finland. Uh, esports in Finland has been growing a lot in last let's say five years since StarCraft 2 came out in 2010 uh, or 11, I don't, I don't really remember at this point <laughs> anymore. It, it, feel, it, it felt like it's always been there because of the StarCraft 1, etc. Uh, but Counter-Strike, Quake, these titles have been around since late 90s and esports has been there even if it w wasn't called esports back then. Here are a few uh, defining points what esports in Finland is. Uh, it revolves, revolves around LAN parties. It's, it, it basically began in Finland in LAN parties, this small, let's say, 100 people getting together in their schools, uh, schools like gym, gym uh, hall or something like that, and putting up some to, uh, computers together and playing games between themselves. But it also, uh, like assembly, it has a demo scene uh, history, a lot of it. And, and I'll talk about it a bit more on the next slide. It's PC dominated in Finland. Bas uh, a lot of uh, players and people consider esports on PC. Uh, console, consoles are there, but they are not showing up and, uh, that much. Active pro players in most major titles. I'm talking about again here uh, mostly about PC dark titles. There are a few few good players also on on the console titles as well. And of course, public interest and awareness, awareness has been growing in the last couple of years a lot. Also thanks thanks of course to Ule about this taking it to the television, bringing it to the larger public. Of course. And there you can see the the gra graphic, and probably you have will talk on the next presentation about it as well. Anyways, here's about uh, long land parties. Finnish, Finland has a large land party scene. Uh, I, don't, I remember last year had I think it was 35 land parties that were listed on the lanit.fi, which lists this. Uh, well, the public LAN parties, of course, uh, they, they are ranging from 50 to 50 attendees to like assemblies, which ha has 6,000, 7,000 visitors <coughs> every year. And I think this summer assembly had even more, more visitors. So uh, they are bringing the players, the organizers and everything together. And that, that's basically how esports in Finland has, has come together. And, and of course, uh, f federation is, is part, uh, federation's history is there as well. Uh, most of it is, of course, voluntary based here in Finland. Uh, we have a strong culture of associations and federations, and this goes back to the history of sports, sports as well. Um, and and I think there's coming more companies trying to do, do, do land parties, events and stuff, but it's not showing yet. And I, I hope it picks up because we need more tournament, uh, tournament focused events in Finland if the esports is going to grow in the future. Uh, tournaments, they range from small amateur level tournaments which are held locally. There are local players, friends, school uh, kind of school friends forming up teams but then there's also these large events which have international competitions like assembly and well the qualifiers usually 
online qualifiers for the offline events. Uh, there are a couple of online tournament organizers as well in Finland. Uh, there are a few small companies popped up this year, which is a great, great thing because it develops the esports scene and it gives something to players to, uh, to, to compete in. And they, they are going to, I think, grow bigger during this uh, rest of the year and next year, and we'll see what, what happens in that direction. Also, there's one kind of volunteer based amateur league uh, organizer that you sh uh, focuses on, on Dota 2, or originally focused on Dota 2, but they have also uh, grown grown into the other titles like CSGO and uh, League of Legends as well, which uh, and the uh, volunteer-based focus makes them quite good because the communities can put a lot of effort and can feel that they are doing good for the community, not just being a company that uh, tries to gather the players and try to make some money with the, uh, from the players. Well, uh, like on the first slide of the esports in Finland, the PC dominated. Well, there are a list of popular titles, but the PC dominates a lot. Uh, Counter-Strike is the ma uh, main title in Finland, uh, without a doubt. Uh, then there's Dota 2, League of Legends, these MOBA games that are a big thing. And, and Hearthstone, of course, because Hearthstone is so easy to play casually on your mobile phone, on your tablet. But it has a lot of potential as a professional game as well, and it's, it's been growing. It's more of a mind game than a uh, sports a sport in a sense of a uh, style how you play it. Uh, Starcraft is still there, uh, but it's it's kind of a niche nowadays because there are so many titles like CS:GO uh, and CS has so, so much history in Finland, being from 1999 and uh, Finnish pro teams playing around Europe uh, in mid mid 2000s. So uh, so it's been always there. Of course, console, you can't forget consoles when talking about esports. There are really good teams in Call of Duty in Finland. There are really good fighting game uh, players in Finland. So you have to give credit to those, but they are not in kind of a mainstream in Finland at all. Um, it's always been in Finland. The history of esports and gaming and on PC, especially in Finland, makes it at the moment so. But, uh, and, and, but the, there are a couple. Uh, companies and, and people are trying to develop the console community to grow the grow the company gaming into the console, but changing titles every year makes it kind of a hard for people to get into uh, piece, uh, console esports, like uh, dedicate to it, so to speak. Um, well, I, one other thing I wanted to point out is the sim racing, which has become lately a big thing. It's a, well, basically a simulation of a real life, real life uh, racing, racing game, uh, car racing and Formula One, etc. And it's really big in Finland. I, I just checked, I think yesterday, yesterday or Tuesday, uh, what is the amount of Finnish players in the World Championship series of iRacing. There's 45 licensed drivers and I think it was 12 of them are Finnish. So basically you have to be good enough to get the uh, best license to be able to compete in the World Championship Series. And that tells you about something that, how the Finns are dedicated to the gaming and their own game. And of course the uh, motorsports is always, has always been interesting in Finland. And not to, not to uh, forget mobile gaming, it's a big thing. It's a growing, uh, let's say, well, Clash Royale is one, one big example that Supercell has brought mobile gaming into esports, or esports into mobile gaming rather, and they are a good example. And I've been in touch with them and they are trying to grow that side, and I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. So we have active professionals in Finland, about 10, 20 full-time professionals in Finland. It's, I think, quite a good number, number full-time professionals because we are a small country, we have small, uh, small uh, tip of the iceberg in, in gamers 
and in, in competitive gamers especially. And then there are a few dozen more semi-professionals that play in a uh, organization or team, but they don't get uh, paid paid enough to be full-time professionals. Uh, these professionals and semi-professionals, they are playing, uh, some of them are playing in Finland, some of them are playing abroad. Uh, there are at least two Finnish Counter-Strike teams that are full-time. The other one is full professional and the other one is kind of a semi-professional uh, level. And, and they are playing both in Finland, but there are a lot of good players that are playing abroad, like uh, a couple Dota 2 players, Lasse Urpalainen and Jesse Vainikka, who, who have been playing on, on the major events in Dota 2 and 1. I think they have been <coughs> shooting up this this summer and spring up to the uh, the most earned, most money earned in e from esports in Finland. Uh, they were in majors and the international. If you if people know the know the Dota 2 tournament that's that was held in mid August or early August. Well, I talked about the organization. Some organizations pay pay salaries and don't some and there are contracts, but usually. Uh, the people who are professionals or semi-professional have an organization backing them up, uh, providing flights and tra uh, or travel costs and, and, and accommodation on the tournament trips. Well, streaming, of course, is one source of income for professional players as well. And, and, but I'll leave it to that. We heard of already a, quite a bit about streaming and what drives it. Tribes it. Okay, uh, what are we currently doing and how we how we came to being basically i'm going just a <coughs> few minutes about this uh if because i i don't think everyone knows what finnish esports federation does and who we are uh, we were founded december 2010 uh, most of the founders were the island party organizer associations and companies uh, everyone felt that there has to be something or some organization that co uh, gathers people together and starts work to work on esports and developing esports and scene and rules and standardizing stuff like like a sports sports federation. So I was there there also founding founding federation and it was quite a interesting times after that few years but we are in a good role right now so basically we try to bring everyone together all the act, uh, actors in the land scene all the actors in uh, Finnish esports scene companies associations volunteers professionals and, and such uh, we have currently 21 associations and companies as a members uh, we are trying to grow, of course, some, sometimes associations stop uh, being active and they, they kind of die off and companies might bankrupt and so this is kind of living all the time. Uh, we are funded by the Ministry of Education and Culture. This year we got uh, 83,000 euros from the youth, uh, youth side of the uh, ministry. And there has, has been some talk about moving into the sports sports department, but I, I don't think it's going to happen in a couple of years. Well, collaborate, collaborating with schools like Practicum and, and of course youth work associations, uh, youth departments of cities, uh, counties, uh, mo mo mostly just being an entity that uh, creates guidelines, helps uh, these organizations to find find possibilities, what they can do and such. Not, not that much just going there and doing ourselves. Well, we are part of the International Esports Federation and we are the representative of Finland in there. And, and we are working with them uh, quite closely, uh, at least being this year, we have been uh, making a referee course for, uh, for ourselves, but we have shared our knowledge and, and materials with the International Esports Federation that is going to be shared then with the other uh, national federations. So we are taking our knowledge and
kind of uh, branding it to the other countries as well. I think that's about it. If you have any questions, I'm trying to answer and or do, do, do my best to answer them. Are yeah, you going to expand it towards bar cups or other similar events where people go and uh, just watch the events instead of there being a live tournament? Uh, there's, there has been a lot of going on, and Federation doesn't that do that much of those. But we are promoting if there are there are such. Uh, there's the Barcraft, Barcraft stuff is going. There's a group for Barcraft in Finland in, in Facebook, and there are some associations, local associations. Our members are doing Barcrafts or rather uh, these pub pub events or bar events that people gather together and watch the tournament or and have a good discussion and a few beers and sodas and such. But uh, I think at least in Uvascula, they, they have arranged quite a few, especially on worlds, League of Legends worlds, where they gathered, I think, about 40 or 50 people in, in the middle of the night to a, to a place and a bar and that allowed them to watch there. And they, they were there like six hours until morning seven or something. Something that it's it's a great thing, and I'm trying to uh, tell other other organizers that they could do it. I just happened to be there, which you just <laughs> okay, so, yeah. But I was just curious because I would see it as a great potential, especially towards like uh, younger audiences, like younger children, for their like evening activities. Uh, since some of the tournaments are now coming towards Europe, so the time won't be like in the middle of the night light as it is in the League of Legends finals. Yeah. And by the way, the number uh, was uh, 200 people. Oh, it was so that much. I, I remember some older one, yeah, maybe okay, then. So, yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah, you uh, Well, I would be interested to know if, if I was an aspiring, you know, wanting to become an esport athlete in Finland, what what do you think would be sort of the biggest hurdles that I would face? What are the sort of obstacles for maybe I actually want to become a CSGO yeah. professional player? <laughs> but what kind of obstacles would I face? Uh, I think the first obstacle is kind of a become known in the scene. Mm -hmm. So the other CSGO players will uh, start to know you, you start playing with them. And when, you, when you're known and you're kind of a you know that you are good enough and they know you're good enough, you get invited into the amateur teams that go to the LAN parties and if you make a name for yourself in the LAN parties then you might get to <coughs> semi-pro teams and so on. And I, I think that's the usual road in Finland and you just don't pop up some, from somewhere to be a, become a professional. You have to make uh, yourself known and kind of brand yourself. I also heard that the army service in Finland is especially difficult for athletes and esports athletes because that takes a pretty pretty long time from the your prime time basically. Uh, yeah, it's it's on that spot like you're 20 years old, you could yeah. you're on the verge of becoming a, a real professional gamer or, or uh, esports athlete. You have to do your uh, military service. Of course, you can postpone it, and actually, I, a federation can can help on that. Right. At the moment, we we can uh, write letters of recommendation of postponing to the military, and, and I think at least two of them have helped the uh, professional players to get postpone, postponing the military service. Yeah. Uh, we have been also researching an option to uh, get esports players into into the athlete programs in. in in the defense forces, but uh, there hasn't been that much success on that yet. But we'll, I, we, I think we will we'll see next year or, or the year after because there's one uh, European or world world quality player uh, on, in StarCraft going to enter the military mm -hmm. service, and we'll see what happens with that. That's very cool. Sorry, yeah. um, I heard about Walden. Uh, Walden was in the army and this athlete. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, the co uh, coach, uh, of course, Federation has uh, one upcoming co uh, coach in esports. He's uh, Samuel Sihvon Elfi from StarCraft to pro former uh, professional player. He started in the beginning of the year, I think in February, uh, training in Bieromäki uh, Sports Institute of Finland. And, and he's becoming a co professional coach, coach in e a speci uh, specialized in Spots. So he's going to, through the same program as the sports coaches in, in Vieromaki. So, so that's a start. Okay, thank you for listening. Sorry, one, one okay, one. you have a question. How is it from a taxation point of view with esports athletes? Is it considered uh, as the same way as, let's say, from a hockey player, the income? Uh, yeah. Uh, the, in Finland, the tax, uh, tax, uh, taxation is, is considered as the athlete's tax. If you win a prize, you have to pay, pay the athlete's uh, income tax. Uh, and if you are getting a salary, you pay all the normal, normal things as the, as the normal, normal uh, employee would pay. So. And is it also like the thing that is possible for at least the other athletes that they have from their gross salary put into their pension? Uh, it should be. Uh, there, there, I think there are. I haven't uh, studied that that much. We have one one uh, guy in our board that has has done done that. But I, I, what I've understood, what he told, it should be, it should be uh, as as usual. You you get your salary or or your winnings, and you can put them into the pension funds, and 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 your personal pension funds, and and they, uh, well. Like like you said, it's okay. it's it's the usual way how the employees and and such work. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.